A group of North Korean defectors handed Ukrainian officials propaganda leaflets urging Pyongyang's fighters to abandon the fight against Ukrainian troops in Russia, according to Newsweek. The collection of former North Korean residents delivered the material, which includes written instructions and audio messages for North Korean fighters on how to defect to Ukraine's embassy in Seoul, South Korea's Yonhap news agency reported. Jang Seyul, heading up the group, says Kyiv's military could secure mass surrender and defection among North Korean soldiers if proactive psychological warfare is mobilized, according to the news agency. There had been small-scale clashes so far between Ukrainian and North Korean troops, Umerov said in an interview with South Korean media published earlier this month, but that Ukraine could not yet verify how many casualties North Korea had sustained or how many soldiers had become prisoners of war. An unnamed Ukrainian official told the New York Times on November the 5th that the engagements involving North Korean troops were limited, probably intended to test Ukraine's lines for weak points. Pyongyang's troops joined Russia's 810th Separate Naval Infantry Brigade, the official said. The US official told the Times a significant number of North Korean troops were killed, but did not specify further. Intelligence from Washington, Seoul and Kyiv has indicated the North Korean soldiers are dressed in Russian military uniforms. The first battles with North Korean soldiers open a new page of instability in the world, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said last week. North Korean troops are conditioned with unwavering loyalty to the leadership and a unique psychological resilience cultivated by the regime, designed to fit a sense of absolute sacrifice for the state into Pyongyang's personnel. Ji Hyun Park, a North Korean defector, now a senior fellow for human security at the Center for Asia-Pacific Strategy, previously told Newsweek. However, this psychological preparation may not translate effectively into practical resilience in the type of active combat scenarios currently seen in Ukraine, where they would face modernized and highly capable opposition in unfamiliar territory, Park said. North Korea may also face morale, desertion and defection problems if its troops start sustaining casualty figures approaching those Russian fighters are experiencing. Andrew Yeo, a senior fellow with the Washington-based Brookings Institution Center for Asia Policy Studies, recently told Newsweek. A Ukrainian government-backed hotline designed for Russian soldiers wishing to surrender as prisoners of war published an appeal last month to North Korean soldiers urging them to not die senselessly on foreign soil. The message was published in Korean. Ukrainian media reported in mid-October that 18 North Korean soldiers had already deserted close to the border with Ukraine, citing anonymous intelligence officials. The Indonesian and Australian militaries began joint combat drills off Indonesia's main island of Java on Wednesday, with about 2,000 troops training in air, maritime, amphibious and land operations. They'll participate in a live-fire exercise near Benangan Beach of East Java's Sichabondo district with tanks, artillery, infantry, and attack helicopters, a joint landing operation and a non-combat evacuation used for a disaster. The four-day Carries Woomera 2024 exercise highlighted the cooperation between the countries strengthened by the recent signing of the Australia-Indonesia Defence Cooperation Agreement. Although Indonesia is often presented as one of Australia's most important neighbours and strategic allies, the relationship has fluctuated. Recent disagreements include allegations that Australia had wiretapped private phone calls of a past Indonesian president, Indonesia's use of capital punishment on Australian drug smugglers and the smuggling of migrants. The exercise is also part of Indo-Pacific Endeavour 2024, Australia's largest international engagement activity in the region, taking place in Australia and Indonesia, commander of the Australian Amphibious Task Force Captain Chris Doherty told reporters. Analysts consider Indonesia's defence a priority of new President Prabowo Subianto. He wants to expand his military by buying submarines, frigates and fighter jets and wants to initiate more defence cooperation with various countries. Indonesia has held military exercises with other countries, including the Russian Navy on November 4 in Indonesia's East Java Seas, as Russia's invasion of Ukraine brought renewed concerns over China's assertiveness in the Indo-Pacific. Last month, Indonesia said its patrol ships drove away a Chinese Coast Guard ship that disrupted a survey being undertaken by a state-owned energy company in a part of the South China Sea disputed by both countries. 
China has rapidly expanded its military and has become increasingly assertive in pursuing territorial claims in the South China Sea, which Beijing claims virtually in its entirety. The tensions have led to more frequent confrontations, primarily with the Philippines and Vietnam, though the long-time territorial disputes also involve Malaysia, Indonesia, Brunei, and Taiwan. Jangan lupa kami akan memberikan.